Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome to today's presentation where I'm going to be talking about the biggest, and I mean the biggest, fattest, humongous, whatever you want to call it, fitness hack. And so I'll be breaking that down in today's presentation, and I'll be giving you guys some actionable tips and strategies as well towards the end of it. So I think this will be jam-packed with a bunch of value that you guys will take a lot out of. So without any further ado, let's just jump straight into it. Now, before we do jump into it, you're probably wondering, Conan, why on earth are you wearing a hood on your head? And the reason for that is because like right now, it's November 27th. I woke up this morning, and for some really strange reason, like I was sleeping with my fan on, and this was the first time in a long time, actually, when I just did not feel like getting out of bed. Like, you're, like I'm a morning person. Usually, like, I just jump out of bed straight first thing, attack the day. But this morning, I was like, okay, I'm way too cold to get out of bed. And so my day just started off really, really cold. Um, it doesn't help that I sleep with just my underwear either. And then um, I stepped outside to go on my morning walk, did not wear a jacket either, and um, I was just freezing. So my entire day, or my entire morning so far at least, has been absolutely cold. So I'm still kind of like recovering from um, the cold chilliness. But that's not going to stop me from providing some bombs and some value to you guys in today's presentation. So what is it? It's not steroids, It's um, although they do kind of help, but it's not going to be as important if you're missing this one single thing. It's not some secret pill that they're taking. It's not some secret juice. It's not. It's nothing secret that they're doing. So people that are in shape, and I do want to pre preface it with this, like people that are in shape, myself, other coaches, other influencers you may see on social media, or even people you, you see at the gym, like they're not some special magical snowflake. Like they're really not, right? They're not like they just came out of thin air and God just gave them just like this power of just having amazing shape. Like it doesn't work like that, right? Here's their secrets. And I want you guys to write this down. They make good decisions more convenient and bad decisions less convenient. And what I mean by that is that people in great shape don't have more willpower than you. They've simply mastered the art of setting up their environment for success. And I'll talk exactly about some actionable tips that you can start implementing into your day-to-day -day routine as well to make your environment or just to prime your environment to make the good decisions more convenient and to make the bad decisions less convenient because this is such a big hack. I did this subconsciously, but I was so unaware of it, right? And once I started to like sit down and like really think about this, it's like, okay, like what actually am I doing that people that are not in shape aren't doing? And it simply comes down to this because I don't think I have more willpower than anyone else. Like we're both human beings. For, if we're both able to think and just like use your body, like there's not a whole lot different from us, right? Most humans, like I think that we're all kind of like capable of like whatever we kind of set our mind to. And I think you're just shooting yourself in the foot if you have this mindset of, oh, all these people in shape, they must have this one secret thing that I don't have. So they are lucky and I'm unlucky. I'm just going to continue on living my life. Like if you have that mindset going into this, unfortunately, like, you're not going to get to where you want to be, right? If you have a growth mindset, if you are actually like willing to learn and adapt, then I think 100% you're able to get into the best shape of your freaking life. But if you have just like this limiting belief or this limiting mindset, that's kind of like stopping you from actually even getting started in the first place, you're not going to get to where you want to be, unfortunately, right? And so before we talk about some actionable strategies, I do want to bust this myth, the whole willpower myth. Because realistically speaking, like we only have so much willpower, like you don't have like unlimited willpower. And luckily for us though, being in shape does not require some superhuman willpower. Like it definitely does not. Willpower is a finite resource that can very easily be depleted. And so successful individuals strategically design their environments to minimize reliance on willpower. A couple examples of willpower may be um, you're in like a social gathering, there's a bunch of food around you're with a bunch of people, there's like pizza there, there's like snacks, there's chips, there's like beer, like there's all this food around you, right? And you decide not to do that, right? Or at least I find myself in situations where there's a lot of food around and like, let's say with my parents, for example, we're out or we're in like a big buffet kind of thing and I did not have any kind of food. And the first thing they kind of tell me is like, oh, Connie, you must have so much willpower. And I always kind of like, I never really viewed it as willpower. 
And that's just one example, right? But I never really viewed it as willpower. I don't think there's nothing special about me. There's nothing magical about me, but I just simply, to be honest, like TBH, like I just would rather eat my bowl of oatmeal and maybe some protein powder, or maybe some berries, bananas, peanut butter over like a couple donuts or over like a piece of cake. Like I would so much rather do that because I know realistically speaking that I'll feel a lot better. It'll actually fit within like my diet. I actually genuinely do like the taste a lot more of that. Maybe my taste buds have just kind of like adapted to it. But overall, like there's just so much more benefits or I just feel so much better with my regular, let's say, bowl of oatmeal or my regular chicken and rice of avocado or whatever kind of meals that I typically eat. I feel so much rather eating that over eating the donuts or eating the junk food, the pizza, the burgers, the fries. And it's not because I have more willpower. It's simply because I make, I just don't want to pretty much, right? And so the convenience really is the key here. So convenience drives positive behavior. Here's a quote that I picked up. Um, I forgot from who it was, but um, if you guys know who it is from, definitely drop it down below in the chat. But um, it's not that some people have willpower and some don't. It's that some people are ready to change and others are not. I love that. And if you really like, just like break down that quote, willpower, like it's just, I don't think it's a made up thing. Like I definitely think willpower is a thing and it can definitely be utilized. Like I think willpower is um, almost just like discipline, right? It's like doing the hard work regardless of how you feel. You feel tired, you do the work anyway. You feel lazy, you do the work anyway. You feel whatever you may feel, you do the work that is required anyway, right? Despite the way you feel. So we have to shape our environment to support our fitness goals, which is exactly what I'll be talking about right now. So a couple of examples that kind of came to mind right away when I was creating this presentation for you guys are as follows. So number one, lay out your clothes, your gym clothes the night before. This is such a big hack. I do this personally. Every single morning I wake up, I lay out my, like my actual clothes that I'm wearing right now the night before because... I do have a lot of clothes in my closet. And first thing in the morning, I do not. And I repeat, I do not want to use my brain power. I do not want to just be using my brain when I wake up first thing in the morning thinking about what I should wear, like what clothes I should wear. Like that decision, even though we think a lot about it in terms of like, okay, well, does this hoodie match with these pants? Should I wear these socks or these socks? What underwear should I wear? Like all this stuff, right? That decision is not that important at all. It's not going to make you more money. It's not going to help you get a six pack. It's not going to help you do anything in life or like, like realistically speaking, right? And it's like, if we dedicate so much brain power and so much just thinking to first thing in the morning, what we should be wearing, it's just like, we're just draining our brain and our brain power first thing in the morning on something that does not even have so much significance towards anything in life really right apart from like making you somewhat look presentable like of course if you go to a meeting you should not wear what i'm wearing right now <laughs> but um if you're just in your house all day or whatever you're going to the gym then it doesn't really matter but yeah number one that reduces the decision fatigue in the morning which is amazing and number two it creates a visual cue for the upcoming workouts. So that's a big hack, lay out your gym clothes the night before. And again, like if your gym clothes are laid out the night before, and let's say you do a morning workout, I mean, that's just like less friction to you not going to the gym, right? Because you could come up first thing in the morning with the excuse of, oh, I'm not going to the gym this morning because I don't have my gym clothes ready. Well, it's like you can immediately get rid of that pretty much excuse and just lay out your gym clothes the night before so that when you go to bed, you can wake up the next morning and just immediately hop into your gym clothes, right? Second thing here is schedule your workouts in advance into your calendar. So I want you guys to treat your workouts just like you would treat any other appointment. If this is a priority for you, which by the way, the word priority literally has the word prior in it. So if you have a priority for something and you don't do it prior to anything else, it means that it is not a priority, right? So if the gym is a priority, if your health is a priority, if your longevity, energy levels is a priority for you, then you have to schedule it into your calendar in advance. Because if you don't schedule it, I mean, it probably means that you don't care about it too much. If you don't care about it too much, the chance of you actually doing the workout that is required for you to get into the shape that you want are gonna be very slim, right? So treat it like any other appointment, a meeting at work, do the same thing with your gym. Because if you don't, the chance of you just like not doing the thing, it's gonna be very likely, right? I don't know if you do, if you have like a girlfriend or a wife or boyfriend's husband, whatever you wanna call it. If you plan your date nights, like if you plan your date nights, then definitely plan your gym workouts as well as just like you would with your date nights. This simply just increases your commitments and consistency, right? Because simply you put it like, if it's not on your to-do list, if it's not written down, it's just not gonna get done, right? Unless you are kind of like into the routine and into the habit of going to the gym at the same time on these days, 
that's cool. But especially as you start out, like this is a great hack scheduled in to your calendar. Number three, have meals prepped and ready in your fridge. This reduces reliance on unhealthy options and ensures that you stick to your nutritional goals. When it comes to food in specific, there's a lot of small little hacks that, again, I was not really aware of, but subconsciously I've just been doing. So another thing that kind of goes along with this is that try to either get rid of all the junk food in your house or try to hide it or try to lock it up or just do something with it, right? Because if it's in sight, it'll be in mind. So let's say you go downstairs right now, you go into your kitchen and you open your cupboard and first thing you see are Pop-Tarts, donuts, sugary cereals, brownies, and it's just like, bam, right on your face. It's like, yeah, you are setting yourself up for failure because if it's just like right on your face, as soon as you open up your pantry, the chance of you just like, nibbling on a couple things, snacking on a couple things are going to be very high, right? And that's not what you want, right? Like you want to obviously, like I mentioned, you want to make the bad decisions less convenient and the good decisions more convenient. And so how can we apply this to your diet? Well, simply put, as soon as you open up your pantry, let's not have the first thing you see be brownies or be a sugary cereal. So number one, you can either get rid of it altogether. I know it may be different if you maybe have kids in the house or maybe your parents in the house or siblings in the house who do eat that type of stuff. I myself, when I was living at home with my parents, for example, I was surrounded by all this stuff. Like my, my little brother and my older brother, they did not really care much at the time, at least, right? About like eating healthy and stuff. Like I was like the weirdo in the house who was make my own meals, prepare my own meals, eat all this healthy stuff. And I definitely was the odd one out there. I did not have the opportunity or I did not have the the choice to just like get rid of all the junk foods. My mom goes grocery shopping. She buys some brownies, some sweets for her sons. And I'm like, nope, throw it all away. Like, of course, I'm not going to do that, right? So I guess I did have to use some willpower there to start with. But if that's not a choice for you, like it wasn't for myself either. Another thing that you could do is maybe just like, at least hiding it somewhere. So, okay, so if your mom goes grocery shopping for, and you have two other brothers and they eat the food, but you try not to, um, or at least you know that it kind of triggers you, which means that as soon as you have maybe one piece of Oreo, that'll lead to 10 pieces of Oreo or the entire box or one piece of chip or turn to, into the entire bag or maybe one scoop of ice cream will to, turn into the entire pint, right? Whatever it may be. Tell your mom, tell your dad, tell your brothers to either number one, hide it. So put it in like a secret location that you do not know where it is. It's really important for you to not know where it is because if you know where it is, then of course it's not really like you know where it is. You can easily grab it, right? Or number two, have them lock it up. So there's like a secret stash that they can lock up that they only have access to the key. That's also great because like if you physically, if there's like a physical barrier to entry, it's um it's gonna be difficult for you to actually like have those foods, those snacks, those trigger foods, right? So those are a couple of things that you could do if um, you're in a situation where you can't get rid of all the junk food. But what I do personally is, and again, this is such a big hack. Like I, in my house, I just do not have any foods or any junk foods. I am all about balance. Like I preach balance all the time in our program, 100% for sure. If you wanna have that donut, go eat that donut. If you wanna have that chips, go eat those chips. Like if you wanna have that pizza, go eat that pizza. But realistically speaking, it's like, I just don't want to have that in my environment because going back to the main point, I want to make the bad decisions as less convenient as possible. So simply put, if the junk food is not in your house and you really are craving something, that's totally cool. But realistically speaking, it's like, okay, well, there's going to be a couple of steps now that you're going to have to take in order to get you to your desired outcome, right? As opposed to it being right on your face in your pantry, donuts right there. Now you may have to either hop in your car drive 20 minutes to the grocery store, pick up the donuts, drive all the way back and then have your donuts, which is like an hour away, right? Or let's say you want to order food. Well, you still have to like pick up your phone, look through the menu, call them, order the food and still have to wait like 15 minutes. Plus you have to spend all that money on delivery and then on the actual food as well. So you can clearly tell that by simply not having it in your environment. There's so much more friction. It makes it so much less convenience, right? And human beings, at least myself, like we're all about convenience, right? There's a reason why like the convenience stores, the fast food places, like they're convenient for a reason, right? They're like all over the place. You drive around, you see fast food place here, fast food place there, gas stations, convenience stores, like they're all over, right? And that's because they're convenient. And so if you can make all of this less convenient and eating healthier, more convenient, the better, right? So instead replace those foods with maybe a bunch of fruits in your house, right? Or maybe some healthy carbs, like some oatmeal, some sweet potatoes, some potatoes, some yams, some rice, brown rice, 
pasta, all this stuff, right? Your proteins, lean source of protein, your eggs, your egg whites, chicken breast, beef, pork, fish, salmon, your healthy fats, obviously, right? Your olive oils, your peanut butter, Team Smooth. And by the way, that's what I'm on, Team Smooth. But uh, I used to be crunchy, actually, but now I've kind of transitioned it more into like the smooth kind of texture and consistency of the peanut butter. Either way, peanut butter is still peanut butter. Or almond butter, amazing. Nuts, seeds, all this good stuff. And um, in case you guys are still wondering for whatever reason, like, yes, I am still drinking my mushroom coffee. I've been off caffeine for, I would say, I think it's been a week now. And um, yeah, no, I feel amazing. But um, that's going to be a topic for a different conversation. But yeah, those are just some strategies how you can make the good choices more convenient and the bad choices less convenient, especially when it comes to food. Because a lot of times people enjoy going to the gym, at least most of the time, right? They enjoy pushing their body. But when it comes to their diet, that's where a lot of people usually tend to go wrong, right? So I really think that just implementing some of these tips into like your environment, your house environment, your work environment, your car environment, because I do know some people that have a secret stash in their car of like just junk foods. You'd be surprised. People do some crazy stuff, right? And um, the last thing here as well is um, batch cooking or portioning for efficiency. So this obviously saves time by batch cooking your meals ahead of time or meal prepping ahead of time and also reduces the temptation to order takeouts. Like if you go downstairs right now and open your fridge and you have like 10 to 20 meals perhaps ready to go in your fridge, ready to be eaten. I mean, that's so convenient. It's like, oh my goodness, that is so convenient. And it's like the chance of you just like eating that as opposed to ordering food or getting into your car and buying unhealthy food it's like it's just there's just so much like more steps to take right there's so much more friction there so yeah that's a big tip i do personally every single week i batch cook my rice batch cook my potatoes batch cook my chicken breast and then all i have to do really is as soon as i wake up in the morning and i want to have my meal i just portion out my meal and boom there you go super easy so those are a couple of hacks that i use personally to make getting in shape a lot easier for myself it's not because i have some extra willpower it's simply because i make the good decisions more convenient and the bad decisions less convenient right a couple added things that i would do want to touch on is um your social circle so i want you guys to build or at least try to build a fitness friendly social circle so Join fitness classes or groups, surround yourself with like-minded people. As you guys know, I talk about this all the time. I preach this. You are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. If you look at your five closest friends right now and they're out of shape, they're playing video games all day, they're eating junk food, they're going out every weekend, they're drinking alcohol, they have bad habits. Well, the chance of you adopting those types of behaviors into your current lifestyle are going to be very high, right? And so here's another big hack, honestly. If you want to get in shape, have some in shape people, have in some in shape friends, like surround yourself with in shape people, because simply by you being around that environment, like you're going to slowly but surely adopt their kind of like behaviors and their habits. Like if you're around five people all the time and you see them prepare their meals at a time, you see them meal prep, you see them go to the gym often, you see them prioritize their sleep, you see them not going out, you see them just do all this healthy behaviors you don't want to be the oddball now right so you're going to slowly but surely transition more into their kind of way of living and you will automatically just start to like get in shape right and if you don't you're most likely going to get kicked out of your tribe or get kicked out of your group right because if you can't keep up you're not providing any value to them chances are they don't want you bringing them down right it's like if you're that one single person that's out of shape and you're surrounded by five other people that are in shape why would those five people that are in shape have this one out of shape friends. And again, like I know this is pretty extreme, but let's just say for argument's sake, like why would they have this one out of shape friends who um, is kind of like trying to drag them down, right? It's almost like a crab in a bucket. It's like, they will not want that, right? Like, of course not. So you're gonna have to either adapt, keep up with them, or you're gonna get kicked out. The social circle also helps with um, just accountability, having accountability partners, or um, the opportunity to share your goals with someone who will hold you accountable. And this overall just increases your motivation and commitments to this fitness, and healthy lifestyle. And of course, all this that I kind of, this is out to you there, is um, part of our program. You have access to me, you have access to our community of like-minded people, the private Facebook group to hold you accountable, to motivate you, and uh, just to keep you on course on your fitness journey, right? That is such a big thing. I absolutely love that. One last thing before I let you guys go, and I talked about this briefly, actually a lot previously, but that is your home environment. So really quickly running through this, create a positive home environment, clear out unhealthy snacks, make the good choice, the easy choice, replace with nutritious alternatives, set up a dedicated workspace to work out at at home. So if you do home workouts, here's another big thing. Try not to work out like in your room because simply put like when you look at your room, right? Or what's like the first thoughts that comes to mind when you think of your room? Like hopefully it's like 
sleep. You got your bed there, nice and cozy, sleep. And it's like, if you turn your room, the same thing could apply with like you working in your room, right? Like if you work in your room, if you work out in your room, and if you sleep in your room, you're doing a lot in your room, right? And you want to have this kind of like view, or whenever you think of your room, you want to be thinking of, okay, sleep. Whenever I enter my room, I should be in sleep mode. I should be in relaxation mode. But if you do all these different activities in your room, like you're working in your room, you're working out in your room now, and you're now sleeping in your room, you have this weird kind of like view on your room now where it's like, okay, whenever I'm in my room, I don't know if I should feel like super hyped up now or if I should feel sleepy to start sleeping. Like I, I'm kind of confused, right? So if you can try to set up a dedicated workspace to work out at at home, whether it's maybe like your living room, or maybe you have like you're in your garage, in your basement, try to have like a dedicated room simply just for working out because you know that as soon as you enter this specific room, whatever room it is in your house or in your garage, you know that, okay, this is workout time. Like I'm in this room for a specific reason to work out. I'm not here to sleep. I'm not here to do work. I'm not here to titty tattle, whatever. I'm here to put into work. So that really, really helps. It may not seem like a huge deal, but there's a reason why you work out at a gym, right? Like there's the gym is there for you to work out and exercise. You don't work out at the grocery store. You don't work out at the cafe. Like whenever you step foot into the gym, it's like, okay, you know, it's go time. Like I'm here to put into work. I got all the machines. I got the equipment. I got the atmosphere. I got everything that I need to succeed. And that is what the gym is for. And when you enter your room, it's like, okay, when I'm in my room, it's time to dim the lights. It's time to read a book and get to bed. When you head into your office, it's like, okay, I kneel. Whenever I step foot into the office, it's time to work, make some money, make some deals, do some meetings, whatever it may be, right? So there's dedicated rooms for each activity. And if you have one room to do numerous activities in, it just kind of creates this weird mindset going into it because it's like every time you step foot into that one single room, it's like, okay, am I working here? Am I working out now? Am I trying to sleep now? Am I trying to make love now? It's like, what am I doing in this room, right? So having dedicated rooms to do dedicated activities just helps a lot, right? So those are some key points that I wanted to leave you guys with. And to conclude today's presentation, convenience truly is the key to fitness success. I cannot stress this point enough. There's only so much willpower you have, but if you can simply make the good choices, more convenient and the bad choices, less convenient, you are going to go a really, really, really long way. Small, consistent changes to your environment lead to big results. Start implementing these tasks right away into your daily lives if you want long-lasting success and fitness results. These quick fixes are called quick fixes for a reason. They may get you from point A to point B, but the entire point of fitness is to stay fit, right? So just because something can get you from point A to point B does not mean that you can stay at point B. It most likely means that you're going back to point A again, if not further down or further back from point A, right? So all of this stuff by simply just changing your environment, changing your home environment, changing your social circle, changing all this stuff to make this lifestyle just easier on yourself. Because why would you want to make this life so harder on yourself? Like why tempt yourself by being in a house full of sweets and candies. So why tempt yourself by being surrounded by people that are eating junk food all the time? Like why put yourself in that environment? Because you are quite literally making it a lot harder on yourself to succeed. And it's like, why not make it easier on yourself to succeed? Like, why not do that? I mean, I surely would, like I am right now. Like everything I do, like all my entire lifestyle helps me become the person that I want to be, helps me stay in shape year round, helps me stay healthy, helps me build muscle, helps me lose fat, helps me do all of this stuff, right? Simply because I've primed my environment to succeed in this lifestyle. So hopefully that made sense to you guys. Hopefully you guys took something away and hopefully you guys can start implementing some of these hacks into your routine right away. If as always, you guys have any questions for me, please let me know. And with that said, I'm gonna let you guys go and I'll see y'all soon. Peace.